Those who spoke badly or yelled at Will were in his head for days. He couldn't shake the cruelest remarks. They were memorable like most memories forgotten. He caught them in fits of sleeplessness, years after they happened, and they scared him just the same. His exposure was so great and so intense that he wasn't able to make sense of them for years when they returned and he grabbed his head and sat up in bed and swallowed in loose clothes and took a piss and squinted in the light and let the early morning rolling mind bleed out in ink over the paper. Helen was in his life again. That excited him to no end. No kiss on the lips, and who needs it, he thought. We're all looking for love. We must resign from our desire, learn to face the cold wind, instead of walking with our backs to it. He adjusted well to the chill, and when folks met him, his presence felt like a northeasterly. But his eyes were deep and calm and accepting like water in a well. And that was okay. It was okay to be that, if that was what you were. He was liked and hated, too proud and too humble, but always visible, always watched. He had a newfound infatuation with dreadlocks. Dreads came by, and he watched the way they moved and listened to what they said, and they were very open, though the braids were tightly woven and tangled. Quite locked in one another's arms, they became indistinguishable. They were vines and entwined into union. Where there was no secret, nothing could be concealed. He followed them and got close to the owners of the dreads, the wearers of the dreads, the growers of the dreads, the planters of the locks, who inevitably slapped him or pushed him away for his irreverence. If only they understood his reverence, dreadlocks were real. And what was it to be so young and together? It was beautiful, almost as beautiful as being young and not together at all. The mystery of madness, the perpetual expression of self. He walked around with sexual energy written in his face, and he could be silent if he wished for he knew he would have his expression. He leaned against walls hidden behind cotton and wool. His was the after-midnight groove. He hadn't nothing to prove. <laughs>